Okay, I think we are ready to get started. Thank you everyone for joining us for this uh, Google Plus Live on Air Hangout. Um, improve your embedded software development flow with the latest open source technologies and sorcery code bench. Uh, my name is Matt Radishansky. I'm a member of the Mentor Graphics Embedded Software Marketing Team. Uh, I'll be facilitating this hangout with our two presenters. Uh, we'd like this hangout to be as interactive as possible, so please feel free to enter any questions you, s you have uh, in the Q&A below the live YouTube feed that you see on our event page. Um, we'll do our best to address them here in real time, and uh, we've also allotted some time for Q&A at the end of the presentation, so if you prefer to save your question to the end, that's fine too. Joining me today for this presentation are Nathan Sidwell and Hollis Blanchard. Nathan Sidwell is a director of sorcery services for Mentor Graphics Embedded Software. He's worked with computer architectures and compilation systems for over 25 years and has been a GCC developer for 15 years, working on components such as the C++ front end, code generation for various established architectures, and porting to new architectures. Hollis Blanchard, also joining us today, is the product owner for Mentor Embedded Sorcery Analyzer. Hollis has been hacking on Linux, uh, server and embedded, and hypervisors since 1998. He loves Mercurial and Python, dislikes x86 architecture, and can't stand Git. Uh, once again, we're encouraging interaction for this event, so please feel free to enter any questions you have below in the Q&A, and we'll do our best to address them. Um, following this presentation, we'll have the recorded version of this live Hangout video posted on the event page also. Um, we will also post links to Hollis and Nathan's slide following the event. So without further ado, please welcome uh, Nathan Sidwell and Hollis Blanchard. I'll send it over to you guys. All right. Hey, all. I am Hollis. I am coming to you today from uh, misty Portland, Oregon. And uh, I don't think I have too much more to add by way of introduction. Uh, Nathan? I'm sure, yeah. I'm Nathan Sidwell. Um, I'm in the UK, so it's my, my evening time at the moment. Um, and as Matt says, I've been uh, developing GTC for 15 years or so now, but I get less and less time to develop it. Anyway, um, uh, Hollis, are you going to um, start off the uh, with your set of slides? Yeah, let's do the slides. All right, so we're talking today about uh, improving your embedded software development flow uh, with open source technology, and open source is cool, and I'm sure you all think so too. Um, so just kind of a quick run through of what we're going to be talking about is the, you know, for starters, some of the just development flow improvements, not about the open source components in Sorcery Code Bench exactly, um, but kind of the stuff that we do around that. Um, and then we will continue and talk about some of the updated open source technologies that are in the latest version of Sorcery Code Bench. Um, and as you can see from the agenda that includes things in Eclipse as well as the, the tool chain. Um, and, and Nathan will talk a lot about that stuff. Uh, so for the development flow, to start with, uh, we've actually combined tool chains um, for the package, both of them, into Sorcery Codebench in this latest release. As many of you are probably aware, when you, you actually need to decide when you are building the tool chain what you're going to be targeting. Um, so if you're going to be targeting Linux or non-Linux. And in the past, that meant you would actually need two completely different tool chains, two completely different installations of Sorcery Codebench, um, but no longer. And this is important because you know, the asymmetric multiprocessing systems are becoming way, way more common. Um, they've, you know, nothing new there, um, but they're becoming a lot more prevalent even in, you know, kind of uh, consumer electronics based processors and, and that kind of thing. And so now it's a simple matter, as you can see in the screenshot here, of selecting when you build a new project, what is the sorcery code bench tool chain that you, that you want to use, Linux or, in this case, EABI. So trace analysis is something that we're really proud of. It's an important aspect of Sorcery Codebench. Um, there are a few things that we've done here in terms of integration with open source. Uh, to start with, for any of you who are familiar with Genevi or Automotive Linux, there is a tracing specification um, as well as some you know, kind of tools and utilities around a format called DLT, 
this diagnostic logging and trace. And so what we have added in Source Reanalyzer is the ability to import that data format natively. Um, and so you can apply a lot of the kind of powerful trace analysis uh, features that we offer there. DLT, you can actually go, there is a DLT logging server. That's an open source project. It's part of the Genevi project. So if you head out to Genevi, you can go look up that code and, and check it out and, and play with it. Um, another thing that, we, that we're doing is we're offering much quicker integration with Linux platforms. Um, so if you just use stock LTTNG 2.0 or later, later is better, um, but 2.0 or later, then all you need to do to get started with tracing and trace analysis is just point Codebench at your target, at the IP address, um, and then off you go. We don't need anything more than that on the target. The third thing, and this is actually really cool, um, we're, we're, we're really excited about this, but is basically user space awareness of some open source multimedia frameworks in Linux, okay? And that's in particular Qt and GStreamer. And I'm sure you guys have heard of these, but you know, Qt, actually, I think it, it's an entire uh, application framework, not just kind of graphics and widgets and that kind of thing. Um, and then GStreamer, of course, is an audio video processing pipeline. So you can do kind of transformations and you say, I will you know, wire up one transformation to another and format conversions and that kind of stuff. So these are very commonly used uh, frameworks on the Linux system. And one of the things that we can now help anybody who's using these frameworks do is actually diagnose problems, especially performance problems, um, by correlating the kind of system-wide behavior, so things that you can tell from the, say, the Linux scheduler point of view. You can correlate that stuff with actually what's going on inside Qt and inside GStreamer. So the, the screenshot that I have here is obviously uh, an example from Qt, but as you can see, we actually can show you, we can measure and show you what, what is the frame rate that you're getting on the animations in your Qt application and how does that vary over time because it, it's not static, right? And when you find a problematic area like, hmm, things are stuttering a bit here, you can look into what's going on in terms of the Qt core event processing um, as well as, you know, look at the system-wide stuff like, well, was my process even running at this point? Was there some other thread that was, you know, stealing CPU time at, at this point where my where my animations were stuttering? So these are some really cool, you know, kind of open source integration improvements um, that should help anybody using using these components. So in terms of open source technology updates, uh, you know, some of the updated bits that we're that we're including in in Source Recode Bench. Um, the big one from an IDE point of view is the Eclipse CDT 8.2 project, and this adds kind of a, a whole bunch of a whole bunch of useful things. Um, if you're not using it yet, you should go kind of check out the full list um, out on the out on the Eclipse website. Um, but just some of the, the highlights, uh, kind of from from my point of view, one thing is that commands that you enter in the GDB console are now reflected in the IDE. Okay, so this is sort of the best of both worlds where you know it's nice to have sort of the GUI view of everything and you can get a you know instantly see a list of your breakpoints without having to type a command to go see that list. Um, but you don't need to go and sort of double click to set a breakpoint. If you want to, you can go right to the GDB console that I'm sure you know and maybe love um, and you know set the breakpoint just the way you always have. And all the both these things are now tied together, so changes in one place are updated in the other. Um, another cool one for uh, for anybody doing a C development, I'm sure we've all run into nested include hell. Um, and there's now an organize includes command in CDT 8.2, and it w does what you might hope it would, and that is it will remove includes that you don't need, um, and it will add ones that you do need. Um, and I, and it'll actually also do some reordering for you as well. Um, so that's that's a, a very a very nice uh, welcome addition there. Um, the, the the third one that I called out here, I don't know about you guys, but I actually have a, a bookmark for the automatic variables in the GNU you know online the, the GNU Make um, online manuals. I can remember about two of them off the top of my head, and every time I'm doing make file hacking, I need to go and look up what they really mean. Um, so now in CDT 8.2, you 
you actually can get a content assist where, as you can see in the screenshot in the bottom right, you start typing a variable and you know you just press control space bar and you get a list of kind of possible completions and even more important than the possible completions the actual explanation for what each of those automatic variables actually means so that one I think is a big big time saver and possibly error saver as well um, so at this point I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Nathan to talk more about uh, some of the tool chain stuff starting with GCC Thank you. Uh, okay. Um, there we go. Right. So uh, one of the GCC has been updated to 4.8.1. The previous release had uh, GCC 4.7. Point something. Um, and uh, so that's um, a major uh, compiler update. Uh, one of the changes there is, is to the diagnostic machinery and the um, compiler error messages. Whereas it now does this thing called carrot diagnostics, where it prints out your source, shows you shows you the error that all we're used to, and now shows you the source line that had the error and where on that source line the compiler had got to when it encountered the error. So in this case, um, there's, a, there's a semantic error here with multiplying an int and a, and a pointer to char, which is obviously illegal. Now, what's really nice about this that that's very useful on its own. Um, but this also unwinds through uh, the Mac of the Free Processor. So that in this case, it's showing me the hash defined source line that where the that was being expanded at the point of the problem, and also shows me the original source location where I had had uh, invoked that macro. Um, and so you can chain that back, and obviously, uh, if you're expanding through multiple macros, you'll have several nodes here saying where each one came from. Um, and this is this is really nice to have. Um, previously, you, you'd look on a line and you'd spot the error quite, quite straightforwardly. A lot of the time, sometimes it would be puzzling. But even for straightforward errors, it's really nice to have it pinpointed on the source line exactly where the, where the error was. Um, other changes in GCC um, that are significant is a new optimization level minus O G. So there's minus O S to size still, minus O zero, O one and O two and O three to different levels of uh, speed optimizations. And now minus O G for uh, debugging for optimizing for debugging and this is aims to have a trade off between um, the uh, limits the optimizations that cause difficulty in debugging your program. Because if you, you're familiar with debugging uh, code that's been generated at minus 02. It's quite tricky to opt to debug at times because uh, instruction reordering happens, so you then you single step uh, your you, you jump around between different source lines. It also does things like uh, elide variables and the like, so you try and look at a value of a variable, but the compiler has managed to remove the variable completely. Uh, so you can't see what its value is anymore. Um, uh, so traditionally you would turn an optimization off completely when debugging. Um, so, uh, but again, then your your program isn't running as fast as it could do. Um, uh, so you've got a sort of uh, quality uh, problem there. Um, so OG tends to do more optimization than minus O0, uh, but less optimization than minus O2, uh, so that your, your code runs reasonably reasonably fast. Obviously, if you wanted to run as fast as possible, you'd turn the optimization knob up to a higher, to O2 or O3, for instance, um, and then you'd uh, degrade the debugging expectation. Uh, but this is a, a nice balance between, between the two uh, choices of, of where you set the optimization uh, uh, performance. Another change in the compiler is C++ 11 support. So C++ had um, uh, C++ 11 was released in 2011, um, and uh, work has been done on the C++ compiler to have support for that. Um, the compiler now has support for all the C++ 11 features. However, the standard template library, which is the um, uh, Libstud C++, doesn't have all of the support at the moment. There are some features that are lacking. 
uh, however, but for most users of C++, they might have uh, to leave the useful sessions there uh, to actually make use of the uh, new features of the C++ language. Um, the compiler doesn't default to C++ 11 support. You still have, if you want to use this, you need to set the option to accept C++ 11 support. It defaults to C++ um, 03, if I recall correctly. Um, other changes in the tool chain are that GDB has been updated previously in GDB 7.4. Uh, now it's been updated from upstream 7.6. Um, interestingly, many of the, the features there that I think Fred Sorcery Copet users rely on there, which is generally sort of remote debugging features, were already in earlier versions of Copet because um, they were developed by us and have gone upstream. And now we've just um, uh, updated our sources to, with, uh, to track upstream uh, with the FSF releases more closely. Uh, GLibc, which is the Linux C library has been updated to 2.18 uh, from 2.7. Um, that's got over 150 bugs fixed. If you look at the FSF uh, release pages, you'll see a, a whole list of issues that have been fixed there. So that should uh, uh, prove more, more, more reliable. Um, CAMU, which is the uh, instruction set simulator, so that uh, that comes with CodeBench and allows you to run uh, your ARM code that you compiled on your x86 machine um, without having any ARM hardware, for instance, um, uh, has been updated uh, to 1.55. But previously it was 1.1 uh, with the previous version that we had, and that's got a whole lot of um, uh, uh, additional features of, of uh, CPUs that are emulated. Um, so this uh, showing is showing the number of different runtimes that are in each release of each configuration of CodeBench. So for instance, for the ARM Linux CodeBench, there are in fact 10 different sets of runtimes there, runtime libraries that are selected for different variants of ARM CPUs um, and different configurations of the ARM CPU, for instance, whether you're running it in little Indian or in BE8 mode, or whether you're using hard, soft, hard float or soft float or a mixture of the two. So this um, produces a, a lot of uh, different runtime configurations. Um, uh, and um, the ones that get the one that gets selected depends on your compilation switches. But that leads me into uh, talking about customized versions of Sorcery Codebench, which uh, we're able to produce. So if, if you have specific hardware that, for instance, maybe has uh, a, um, um, a Variant CPU that we don't support directly, we can um, uh, add you know, a runtime that's configured for that CPU. Um, and uh, obviously, having the right, the having the runtime library built directly for your CPU to give you better performance on on the program that are using that. Um, maybe we we can add. Um, board specific linker scripts so that the toolchain knows the memory map of your board, um, the startup code for your board if it's bare metal, for instance. Um, and also we can add debug probes supported. We have different debug probes than ones that are, are supported out of the box and code base. We can add that. Um, uh, more interestingly, for instance, if, if you have a variant CPU that, that is not um, uh, if you've got your own bespoke CPU or your own implementation of a licensed CPU, for instance, you may have different performance characteristics. Uh, we can do um, optimize porting the toolchain to, to your CPU and um, specific optimizations that take advantage of whatever performance characteristics you have that differ from the standard part. Uh, so this is these are all sort of points in the um, services, uh, the bespoke services that uh, 
the uh, tool train team can provide to you. Uh, I think I've covered everything there. Um, and we now have um, open for to uh, questions that, that people may have. So. Thanks, guys. Uh, it looks like our um, Q&A function on our live page uh, isn't working properly, so we haven't got any, any questions cut in. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll probably, if you guys don't have anything left to say, we'll um, wrap up this live presentation. Uh, we'll ask folks to put any questions that they have in the uh, chat below the live YouTube feed once we get that working properly. And then uh, we can come back later and, and address them later today or tomorrow as the questions come in. So um, I think that will probably conclude our live presentation. So thanks to both of you for your presenting. Any, any final words? Uh, no, not, not for me. No, it's unfortunate we don't have any, um, any questions. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks for your time. Thanks for the, uh, for the presentation and that overview. And uh, thanks, fo folks, for watching. It looks like we've got a few hundred viewers on our, on our live YouTube feed. So um, glad, that, uh, glad, we're folks, glad that folks were able to, turn it, to tune in to us. So thanks again. Again, please post any questions that you have below the live YouTube feed, and uh, we'll address them as they come up. All right. Thank thanks very all. Much, guys. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye.